Hey Fiberista, so I'm back with another demo that I recorded at the beach. I went to the beach with my girlfriend. We made art and hung out and relaxed and did a little beach combing and, and got a lot of inspiration. If you didn't catch the last week's video where I uh, carted up the roll log that I'm going to be spinning today, I'm going to put a link in the description below and you can check that out. All right, so here I am at my wheel. I'm just going to get a little bit of the end started really quick. It's going to be an auto wrap, so I'm using this mill end thread, and I've kind of placed it between my legs. That's the best way for me to, without getting it all tangled up in places. And it's so light, I'm, I'm having a hard time trying to find it. What I do is I kind of get the the auto wrap yarn started right next to to the fiber at the first you know few inches, and then I just kind of let it go, and it's going to kind of wrap around the yarn as it will. It's going to come out kind of uneven and and kind of messy. It adds certain texture to the yarn, and I I really am going for this look. Now this yarn's going to be kind of a little thinner. I want you to pay attention right now to my feet and the pedals because the flyer is going to make it appear that I'm spinning faster than I am. But if you look at my feet, I'm actually spinning really slow because what I'm doing, you know, with these roll logs, those fibers can be kind of, kind of hard. So I'm going to have to kind of pull it, you know, towards the wheel and then sometimes pull it back towards myself just to kind of break up those fibers. Um, I kind of did that on purpose uh, to, to kind of keep a lot of the chunks in place. You can see me flicking out some of that vegetable matter here. Um, and you can see some of it is, is stuck, but, but I just kind of keep, keep working it. Uh, just kind of keep pulling on those fibers. And, and I don't mind if it's going to be a little stuck together because that's going to create some of the textures. So what I'm doing is I'm pinching and I'm pulling two. And as the textures come into my drafting triangle, I'm either choosing to, to close my fingers around it to make a smoother yarn or open up my fingers and let the texture kind of go into place as is. Now for this first few feet of this yarn, I'm going to keep it relatively smooth. And the reason being is whether I'm using this for knitting or weaving, and I'm kind of spinning this with weaving in mind, it's easier to work this yarn when it's smooth on either end. I'm going to let the textures kind of build up after I get the first few feet in there. So I'm just working off of one end of this row log, and again, as the textures come into my drafting triangle, I'm deciding whether I'm going to pinch my fingers around it to, to smooth it out or let it become a lump within the yarn. And you see some of these fibers are, are still kind of stuck a little bit, but that's okay because you can see it's adding some really cool textures into the yarn. Here's some of that uh, recycled sari fiber that I carded, and that has a short staple, so I'm trying to pull a little bit of wool in alongside the other fibers because it has a short staple length. Alright, so here I'm coming across a lock, and you see I kind of let my fingers not press it down, and it becomes a nice texture for that yarn. Again, here's another bit of lock that's coming into my drafting triangle and I'm just going to let go of it and let that lock do what it will just around that yarn. You know, same with some of these other textures, not necessarily locks. Sometimes I might come across like a little chunk of fiber. You see I'm picking up a lock here because I decided it needed another chunk. And just kind of letting it do its thing and making sure to secure each end, the top end and the bottom end of that lock. Now here's another big piece. And you see I have the top locked in and I'm securing the bottom. So you can see as the, the, that big chunk approaches the orifice, 
I'm gonna grab that auto wrap yarn and I'm gonna guide it back over that chunk you can see here where I have that wrapped purposefully around those big chunky locks. All right, continuing to work. You know, sometimes it's going to be a little tough to pull. Sometimes it's, you know, it's it's kind of like I'm tearing the fiber away from the grow log. Again, and as it, here's another big lock that's coming into my draft. So I'm making sure the top's secure, and then I'm seeing what I'm working with, and slowly let it wrap. And you see the end's not really secure in fiber, so I'm making sure it secures. Now, up oh, there. I'm, hitting a piece of sari ribbon so I'm making sure that that's running alongside some wool because I want the end of that sari ribbon to be grabbed by the wool because that sari ribbon um, is silk and so it's a little slippery so I want to secure that end with some wool. There's another lock make sure that that end secure but I'm leaving that little bitty bit of an end as a texture. Now I can break off and, and reattach if I'm not liking where, you know, if I think that it needs some color. You see I'm, I'm picking up that lock right there to go along past that, that bit of soy silk and then controlling it. Now I wanted this lock to fluff up a little more but I didn't want it that big so I'm taking that auto wrap yarn and slowly letting it wrap around the biggest part of that texture to kind of tame it a little bit. Again, continuing on, oh, here's some banana silk, and a little bit of that farm wool that I had dyed. And just kind of, you know, paying attention to the textures as it's coming through. Oh, here I am with a bunch of Angelina. Oh, and that stuff gets all over my black skirt, but at least I can see it on the black skirt. So I'm picking it up and putting it back into the yarn off of my skirt. But again, you know, continuing to work pressing my fingers against the, the fibers to control it if I want it smooth and then letting go with the textures. All right. You know, and, and if there's a lump and I'm not really wanting that lump, I, I can always take the top of it and drag it down across the, the yarn a little bit to, to kind of push it back to another place in the yarn. And again, I'm, I'm, even though the flyer looks like I'm going really fast, I'm, if you can tell, I'm just, I'm not treadling that fast. And that way I can get more control over, you know, do I want a lump in that texture? Do I want to smooth it out? Do I want to control where the auto wrap yarn is to get a little more auto wrap around that area? And sometimes, you know, the fibers are a little short, so I might want to break it off or or kind of pull up some wool like this sari fiber is really short so i might want to pull up some wool up oh, here's another lock and i'm just letting that wrap around more of the wool some angelina in there as well you can tell that stuff is sparkling i had a lot of angelina in this one and again you see i'm smoothing out some of that fiber because i don't want the yarn to be terribly thick you know, I don't mind certain areas being thick, but I'm trying to keep it relatively thin because I'm, I have weaving in mind for this yarn. So you can see I'm working in some more of those little lumps. Now I like those little lumps. They kind of give me a little bit more texture. It's not going to be a boring smooth yarn. You're going to have like the auto wrap yarns going to settle into places in between these lumps. You can see here. A little more detail of the yarn you can see the auto wrap is a little uneven and there's there's some lumps in there but it kind of adds a bit of interest to that yarn um, outside of the other texture and locks so I you know in breaking it off and putting it with uh, another section of yarn if I feel like it's getting too wide or if there's too much color and I need more white or if there's too many fibers that aren't wool because the wool's going to grab it a little bit but if I have a lot of slick textures together then that might make a weak spot in the yarn so I'm trying to keep the wool dispersed evenly amongst the yarn. You can see here I'm adding a little bit of texture with some of that farm wool crimp. And then here I'm coming across, you know, uh, the center of the these row logs tend to have a lot more texture in the in them so I might slow down a little bit and see if I can control you know that so I won't get I want it to be relatively even 
you know, with some lumps, but I don't want like big thick sections and then super thin sections throughout the yarn. So again, working and, and coming across some locks, deciding if I'm gonna smooth over them or let them or just let go of them and let them be what they're going to be as they twist onto the yarn so here i'm working with some of the green color and sometimes with the colors as i'm transitioning with the colors i like to let the colors barber pole a little bit so here it's fading into the blue a little so at this point i'm gonna oh, let's see i think i pull it Yep. Oh, here's some of that banana fiber. Sometimes that can act like a lock, and so I let it be a real lumpy texture to show off a lot of that, that stringiness of the banana fiber. So you see I'm flipping my roll log around because I've just spun a bunch of color and I'm ready to get back to more of that white. So I find another space on that roll log that, that has colors that are better suited to kind of keep the color from being all in one section. I want the white to be predominant and then colors, little splashes of color here and there. So again, here I'm coming across more of that upcycled sari fiber and it, it tends to have a, a short staple. So I'm trying to disperse it a little evenly amongst the regular white wool. So the white wool will kind of grab it and it also separates those colors out a little bit more and gives more of a tweed look. To, to the whole yarn and sometimes those are big chunks I'm trying to smooth it out to be a little a little more even all right so we're back to some other areas with the green working to it so now I'm getting towards some pretty chunky areas within this this row log again trying not to get too many huge lumps I don't mind some small lumps but not too many huge lumps you can see I'm letting that one little piece of string from the recycled fiber to spin around and barber pull a little bit and pulling some of that white chunk down to smooth it out. Uh, I think I'm about to come across a lock right here. All right, here we go. Oh, not yet. I don't want too ch big of a chunk around that lock. That's going to make too big of a space. So I'm going to take that lock and I'm going to let it just kind of spread it out and wrap around a little bit. Now I don't mind that much, that big of a chunk. All right, so here as I'm working to try and separate this this out and smooth it out, so here you can see I'm going to let that little chunk go right on through and it's going to be a nice little accent piece. So here you can see that, that big chunk of, of, of fiber, that's going to look really nice popping out in one little area of an art weaving so I'm trying to have a few of those in within this yarn all right so as I'm working you know if I don't if it feels like it's the fiber short or it's not grabbing in a place I want then I can always you know just tear it off and start again on a different part of that that row log again trying to keep the general width consistent and that might be that I add some fiber on top of an already spun section up top just to thicken it up a little bit if I feel it gets a little too thin. Oh, you see there my auto wrap thread broke so what I'm doing is I'm kind of placing it directly on that fiber again and then I'm taking a little bit of, of wool and I'm gonna let it wrap around both the auto wrap yarn and the regular yarn and so I'm gonna hold it close together and then reattach my roll log up to that section to make sure that that's that auto wrap yarn secured back on top of the yarn of course it happens right when I get a big chunk of fiber right here so I'm trying to spread that out so I don't have a big huge mass right there and then I just let the, the auto wrap yarn go again and and work with with where I'm at on that fiber and of course like I said there's some big chunky pieces coming up so I'm, I'm just kind of slowly slowly working and pulling out now here's a big piece of sorry ribbon I make sure the ends are secure up oh, and now I'm coming across a big old lock 
so I can tell that it, I'm just gonna let that kind of wrap a little bit because there's some other textures in here I don't want you know the texture of that sorry ribbon and then oh look here's another big lock so I'm gonna try and manage that but keep it somewhat chunky in there because there's a lot of good texture and just let that be what it's gonna be up oh, and here's another lock I'm going to try and control that texture a little bit. And you can always, like I said, keep flipping the roll log. If it feels like you're getting too much of one thing in a spot, you can always start from a different point on the roll log, be it the other end or even towards the middle. Just kind of keep working. Again, you know, pulling, pulling in both directions as, as need be smoothing the smaller shorter stapled fibers in with the yarn kind of pushing it into the drafting triangle and uh, to make sure that those smaller fibers are secure any of the slippery fibers I'm trying to to put wool near the slippery fibers because if I have two slippery fibers together then that might be a weak spot in the yarn and again pinching where I want the wool to be smooth and then letting my fingers go in the areas where I want there to be more texture. If I want a lot to really pop out with that texture, I'm pretty much going to just keep my hands off of it and let it let it do what it's going to do. You can see here's another little section where I'm got the lock in place. And I just keep working. You know, I don't try and pay attention to where things are on the yarn. I just work with whatever's in front of me oh, and I can even pull out things that I don't like all right some more of that sorry fiber again I keep trying to push it into the wool because I don't want the short fibers of that sorry fiber to to make a weak spot in the yarn and again that auto wrap yarn is just hanging out and doing its own thing. I'm not even paying attention to it unless I need it to secure a lock or create a texture, but for the most part it's just going to stay. Now here's a big piece of sari ribbon. I secured the top end. I'm letting it twist around to give a little hairy texture and then I'm making sure that there's wool over the other end to and twisted to secure it into place. Sometimes as you get further, uh, as you start to run out of Rolog, you're stuck with the textures that you keep flipping over or pushing around. Oh, there's a nice big chunk. Now you see how I didn't even touch that lock and it's making a beautiful texture right there. And then I'm creating some smooth areas on either side of that lock to make sure that that lock really stands out. So I'm not ready to put that other lock up. Okay, now I'm ready for that other lock. Put that in the place. Make sure the end is secure. All right, so here's the yarn. Again, with weaving in mind, there's some thick and thin spaces in here, but it's not overly thick or overly thin. There's gonna be pops of lock and pops of extreme texture, but for the most part, the textures are somewhat subtle. So this isn't a lot of yardage. Like I said, for weaving, I don't need a ton of yardage. If I was going for something for knitting, I would probably carve a bunch of row logs and then mix up spinning those and, and just kind of go by weight. So anyway, there you have it. There's the yarn. All right, Fiberista, thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned, I had filmed a bunch of video footage while I was at the beach. So I have some more demos coming, so stay tuned.